Okay, here is a screencast of 11 different algebra questions that come from GED.com. In here, you're going to see a, a pretty good variety of different questions. And if you're just starting to learn the, the GED for math, I would focus my attention on being able to translate problems, uh, word problems into expressions. Okay, and, and I call these out in this video and also solving just one and two step equations. You really need to master this before you get on into factoring or quadratics or systems of equations. Again, all of which come up in these 11 questions. So I say that here at the beginning, if some of this stuff seems so difficult or so unique, or like, man, I never learned that, especially if you never really um, got through ninth or 10th grade math, some of the stuff is, is gonna be new, but here's the, the thing when it comes to the GED. You can actually pass the math portion having a solid understanding of one and two step, which tends to be seventh, eighth grade math. Um, so if you really can understand this well, you can not get these ones over here, the secondary focus, get these ones correct and still pass. If you really want a high score, 160, 170, or even higher, you're gonna need to get into factoring quadratics and systems of equations. So I just say that at the beginning, just, just so you can kind of focus your attention and realize if, if you're watching this video early on in your learning, um, to really focus your attention, oops, sorry, focus your attention on uh, these uh, translating in one and two step equations. All right, let's jump into the problems. Okay, here is the first question. It says subtract, and it's got um, these expressions here, 3x minus 4y minus 4x minus 3y. So um, you should always get in the habit of rewriting and not trying to do these in your head um, because these will be on a computer screen and you will have to write them down on a scrap sheet of paper in order to work them out. So this first expression here in parentheses, nothing is happening to it. Nothing is in front of the uh, parentheses. So we're not going to do anything to it right now. This negative here, this subtraction sign, we can think of as a negative that it needs to be distributed across um, this whole expression here. Okay, so what we're going to end up having to do is change the sign of these. When we multiply something by a negative, we change the sign. So there's a positive implied here, and then here there's a negative. So this is going to end up being, if you take a negative times a positive, your answer is going to be negative. So now this becomes negative 4x, and then a negative times a negative is a positive 3y. So notice this was positive here, and now it's negative. Okay. Again, nothing is happening here, so we can take this straight out of the parentheses. And now our full expression is 3x minus 4y minus 4x plus 3y. So now we can combine the x's, these ones here. I'm just kind of drawing some, some lines here to show that we're bringing these together. So this will be 3x minus 4x. Um, so this is, again, this is implied to be a positive. This is a negative 4x, so we have one more negative than we do positive. So sometimes I do these kind of things for students to show that you have four negatives and three positives. So your answer is going to be one um, negative x, and so we don't normally write the one, so it just becomes negative x. Okay. Now let's combine these the y's here. So you end up with a negative 4y, because we're using this negative here, um, is dropping down over here, plus 3y. So again, you end up with four negatives plus three positives, which ends up with one negative left over. So again, we don't write the one, we just write it as negative y. So if we bring these together, our full answer is negative x ne minus y, which is a here. Question two, a painter uses the expression 35H plus 30C to determine how much he charges a customer for a job that takes H hours and C cans of paint. His last job requires three cans of paint and he took 15 hours to complete. How much did the, did the painter charge? So um, if you think about it, what we're doing here is we're doing hours 
how many hours he works plus the cans of paint that he uses uh, he or she uses and that's going to determine the charge okay they give us the expression here as 35 H plus 30 C equals and again that's just going to equal how much um, we're, we're charging them the total price so they tell us that um, I guess it is a he he works 15 hours and the cans are three three cans of, of paint so uh, we're going to insert 35 I'm sorry, insert um, 15 here and multiply it times 35. When we write these parentheses right here, there's a multiplication. I'm just going to do a dot for multiplication plus 30 times 3 cans. And then we're going to add those two together. So let's use a calculator here. Let's assume you can use a calculator on the test. I always encourage students to use a calculator. Don't try to do it in your head unless you're really good. Um, and you know that. So 525 and something like this, 30 times 3 or 3 times 3 is 9, add a 0 is 90. So just another thing, again, you know, do this on the calculator. Really encourage that um, if, it's, if it's there for you, use it. So we got 525 plus 90 is going to give us an answer of 615, which is right here, C. Okay. Question three, in a science experiment, the initial temperature was 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and each hour after, the temperature dropped by four degrees. Which expression represents the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit after T hours? So if you look at the answer choices, first thing that comes to my mind is really two different questions. Are, are you adding or are you subtracting? Um, and are we subtracting or adding the 55 first or second? That's kind of the way you think of it. Um, this right here dropped. The temperature dropped by four degrees per hour. That's gonna be subtraction. So we immediately can get rid of the ones we're adding. The temperature's not increasing. So these ones are gone, okay? Now it's dropping. And so um, we have to assume, did the temperature change at the beginning or or are we um, saying that the uh, starting temperature is 55 and then the change is coming after that? Well, here it says initial. So it's going to be 55, okay? 55 degrees is what we're starting with, minus uh, every 4 degrees per hour, okay? And that per hour is going to give us 55 minus 4 T because they tell us T is the hours and so our answer is right here okay if you do this and let's say they gave us hours um, they gave us like you know four hours or something this uh, you would get end up with a negative number or um, sort of the the negative version of this one which is that's the reason why that one's wrong um, let's go on to question four all right here we have um, some factoring that we're going to have to do, um, or some foiling rather. So we have 2x minus y be multiplied by 3x plus y. So we have these two different binomials that we're going to be um, multiplying by each other. So here's an example over here for this um, sort of acronym that we use, FOIL, F-O-I-L. Um, stands for the first, if you look at the green, so the first in each parenthesis, the green sort of line connecting the two. The outsides are going to be the red ones, so the outsides of each of the parentheses. The insides, so the two innermost of each parentheses in blue. And then the last one um, is, is the brown one here. So again, if we rewrite this, we get 2x minus y times 3x plus y. So I'll go ahead and try to use green too. So what we're going to do over here is do 2x times 3x. So I'm using a dot for multiplication here. And 2x times 3x, that's, again, I'm multiplying here. That's going to be 6x squared. All right, now let's use red. Um, we're going to do the outside. So the outside's a parenthesis. We're going to do 2x times y, which is going to give us that's going to be a positive answer, um, so it's going to be plus 2xy. 
Now in blue, we're going to do the insides. So that's these two here. So this is going to be a negative y because we include this sort of subtraction sign as a negative that is placed in front of that, um, that letter there, that variable. So times 3x, which is going to give us a negative 3xy. And then the last one that we're going to do in brown here is to go from the two outsides. So this is going to be the negative y times this positive y. So if you take a negative y times a positive y, you're going to end up with a negative y squared. Okay. So the first thing, if you look at your answer choices, these ones start with a 5x. There's, it either starts with a 5x or a 6x. If it started with a 5x, you have to assume, and the test makers here are assuming, do you add them? You don't add them, you multiply them. So we know right off the bat we're getting rid of these. Okay. Um, if we bring these down, we're going to have a 6x squared. Now we've got a two, positive 2xy minus a negative 3xy. So again, I like to do these little things. I don't know if it's helpful or maybe it's too simple for some people. But you've got three negatives and two positives here. So we're going to end up, we have one more negative. So this is going to end up being negative xy. So we've just now combined those two here. Now we've got a negative y squared and that's going to end up being here. So let's see which answer. This one was a 2. There's no 2 here. So our answer is going to be A. All right, question 5. A rental company carries tables that seats 2, 4, or 8 people. For a wedding, a customer orders X tables that seat 2 people, Y tables that seat 4 people, and Z tables that seat 8 people. Which expression represents the number of people who could be seated at the tables that the customer orders. All right, so let's look at the answer choices here. Here it has you multiplying um, all the tables by themselves. Here you're adding, okay, and here you've got some sort of, um, you know, binomial expression here where you're, you're, you would be multiplying them again. So, um, and here you're also multiplying them. So if you look at these, um, you kind of have a binary choice. Do you add them or do you multiply them? Is there any sort of multiplying that needs to go on here? Um, and I guess here you are multiplying 2 times x and 4 times y. Um, well, I think that hopefully you can see the answer is going to be b, all right? Because you have 2 x's. So for every table that is that is an x table, if you think of it, two people can sit there. Plus, um, for every y table, we're going to have four people that can sit there. And for every z table, eight people can sit there. And so if you end up having, let's say, you know, two or let's say three of each of these tables, right? Um, if you have three two tops, three four tops, and three eight tops, you would insert three for each of these, okay? Um, so again, I'm kind of making an extension to the problem here. This is not required to answer the problem, but just to prove the point, you would end up being able to have six people sitting at tables that can hold two people, uh, 12 people here, and 24 people here for a total of 32 people. Sorry, 42 people. Jeez. Um, let me erase that doing some quick math on camera. Um, so 42 people total. So this is how you would normally go about doing it. And so B is the correct answer. All right, number six, you're adding two different fractions um, that have expressions. You're adding two different um, ex uh, fractions that are expressions down here. And so what I want to make a connection to down here is, well, what if we had a much simpler fraction? What if we were adding one half plus one third? What would we do? Um, and so you need to find a common denominator. Um, and in this case, it doesn't even have to be the least common denominator is six, but uh, you can always simplify at the end. So you just really need a common denominator. Here, the way to get this is six is going to be a common denominator. If you multiply two times three, it will always work to have a common denominator. If you take the two denominators and you multiply them by each other, it will always work as a, 
common denominator. It might not be the least, but it'll work. So here, you multiply by 3 to get 6, and so you get 3 over 6 is equal to 1 half. So they have an equal value, they're just sort of different numbers or different scales. Same thing over here, 1 third times 2 gives you 2 six. You can bring these down and you can add them. So we're effectively going to do the same thing with this problem here. All right, so if you notice, we took two times uh, three here. We multiplied these two together to get six. So that's the same thing we're gonna do here on the bottom. Um, we're going to take three times x plus two, and then we're gonna do x times x plus two, plus x times, um, x over here, and then this one will be x times x plus 2 over here. All right, so all that we've done is, again, we're multiplying the bottoms together. So you could even go through and look. Let's go through here and look and see uh, which ones of these are going to make sense. So notice we've got x and um, times x plus 2 down here at the bottom. So my hunch is, go looking forward, one of these is going to be our answers. All right. Um, this one is, is going to be wrong because it appears as though it um, looks like they're adding the x's and to get 2x. And we're not going to do that. We're going to have to end up, um, we're going to end up leaving them the same. But if we do this up here, we are going to end up multiplying um, this 3 times that x and this 3 times this 2 and then this x times this x. Okay, we've already multiplied, we're going to leave these ones down here the same. So up here, 3 times x is going to be 3x, and then 3 times 2 is going to be a positive 6. x times x is x squared. And again, we're adding these, we'll put the denominator down, x times x plus 2 over here, and x, x plus 2 over here. All right, so if we look at our different, um, the order of them, it, we need to try to match the order. So we have an x squared, let's put that first, and then we're going to do the 3x, and then plus the 6 with our denominator of x and x plus 2 down here. So our answer is right here, D. Question 7. A written description of a mathematical expression is below. The quotient of the sum of 4 and 2 times a number and the difference of 6 less than 3 times the same number. So I know that when a lot of students read this, they are immediately conf confused because it's, if you try to understand it all the way through, it's, yeah, it's, our brains are just not um, equipped unless you do this a lot to be able to fully understand this. So we need to take it apart. So. You know, if, if it were me and I was taking the test, the first thing I would do is like quotient, all right? So I'm going to say a quotient. What do I do? A quotient, well, that means division. So um, a quotient is division. Um, if it were a product, that would be multiplication. And sum, um, sorry, <laughs> trying to write and talk at the same time. So down here you have multiplication. Um, ah, geez, sorry, product is what I meant to write, product. Um, and so if they said the product, you would multiply them. So we'd be looking down here, but we're looking at a quotient. So now we've got division. Now we have sum. So sum means to add. And it says four and two times a number. So if you were to do this, it would you would think of this as four plus two times the number is two x. Okay, four plus two x. Well, it's always good to think of the variable coming first. So the x should come first. So really we should write this as two x plus four. And you see that here, two x plus four to help you. So really our only choice now, because we've already just we've already gotten rid of these because of the word quotient tells us we have to divide them. Um, the next one is the difference. So the difference means subtraction. So they're throwing all these words here. So we're going to subtract. And here it says if you were to write this, it would be 6 less than, which is minus, um, 3 times the number, which is 3x. Again, you should always put the variable first. So really, we are going to do 3x minus 6. 
And you see this by the test makers of the GED less than. They put this in there a lot. And a lot of students are going to do 6 minus 3x. But you always want to put the variable first. So it's 3x minus 6 is going to be your, your answer. And therefore, A here is going to be the answer. This is the distractor, the one that's wrong. Um, so moving on. Question 8. Lucy is shipping five boxes that all weigh the same and one envelope that weighs 7.5 pounds. The total weight of the shipment is 65 pounds. What is the weight in pounds of each box? All right. So what we've got here is we have boxes plus envelopes, or envelope in this case, um, and that is going to equal the total weight, okay? So if we go through and we do this, boxes, we have five boxes and they all have the same weight. We don't know that weight, so the weight here is unknown, so that's going to be x, okay? And we have one envelope whose weight we do know. So you could think of this as 1 times 7.5 because in case there was like two envelopes or three envelopes or whatever, you would multiply it times 7.5. So um, when we figure this whole thing out, the total is going to be 65 pounds. So again, we don't know the weight of each of the boxes, but we know that we have five of them and we know that we have one envelope at 7.5 pounds and they total 65. So I just multiplied this one here. Okay, might seem unnecessary for some of you. But what we're going to do now, we have a two-step equation. Um, we need to solve for x. And so what's happening to x, this is one of the things that I often do, um, is I like to think about, you know, what's happening to, uh, so I'm just going to do happening, and then we're going to do the opposite or the inverse here of that. So what's happening right here to x is we are adding 7.5. So we're going to subtract 7.5 from both sides. The other thing that's happening to x here is it's being multiplied by 5. So we're going to divide by 5 in order to undo that, or the inverse. So the inverse or the opposite, okay? Um, so we're going to subtract 7.5 here in order to get rid of that. So let's do 65 minus 7.5. So let's clear this. 65 minus 7.5 equals 57.5 so we got 57.5 equals now 5x so again what's happening here is x is being multiplied by 5 so we're going to divide by 5 okay so we create a line here effectively this is a fraction fractions are division and we're going to divide by 5 here these fives cancel out we've isolated x which is our whole point we need to take 57.5 divided by 5 so if we just do divided by, that gives us our answer, which was 57.5 divided by 5. And we get 11.5 as an answer. Uh, did we do it correctly? Yes. Okay. All right. Number 9. A, systems of, a system of equations is shown. So you have 4x plus 3y equals 8, and 4x minus 3y equals negative 16. And they're asking, what is the value of x? Um, so what we're going to do here is you need to set one of these equations equal to y. We ultimately, they're asking for the value of x. And so if we solve for y, okay, if we can get this thing, solve for y, okay, we can insert it into here, into this equation, okay? And then all we will have are x's. Okay, because we're gonna, we will only have x's and numbers here. And we'll only be able to insert it into there and then solve it. So that's what we're going to do. So let's take this first one. 4x plus 3y equals 8. And we're going to solve this for y. Um, so the first step is we're going to move these 4x's over here to the other side. So minus 4x and minus 4x here. So now we're going to have 3y, dropping these down, equals 8 minus 4x. Okay. Now we're going to divide by 3 in order to isolate that, that y. Okay. So y equals 8 minus 4x divided by 3. Alright, so now we have y. So 
let's write this other equation over here. 4x minus 3y uh, equals negative 16. We are going to take this and we're going to put this into here, into that y. Okay, so it's going to be 4x minus 3. Now in parentheses, I'm going to do 8 minus 4x divided by 3. So there's that whole expression now, equals negative 16. All right, so if you look at this, we have a negative 3 uh, being multiplied by, by this uh, here in parentheses. So we need to distribute this negative 3 but we're effectively dividing by a negative 3 here. So actually, we can simplify this right off the bat. We can take these here and get rid of them. And so we still need to keep that negative there because all we're doing is getting rid of the 3, the sort of the constants there. So our, we are going to have 4x minus 8 minus 4x equals negative 16. So we still have this negative and so we need to distribute it here. So this is going to be, there's a positive implied here, and so this is going to be 4x, a negative times a positive is going to be a negative, so negative 8, and a negative times a negative is going to be a positive 4x equals negative 16. Alright, so we can combine these x's, so we have 4x plus 4x, that's going to give us 8x minus 8 equals a negative 16. And so if we add 8 to both sides to get rid of it, to, to move it over here, um, sorry, adding 8, uh, glad I got that. So we got 8x, I'm just bringing this over here, equals, so if we do this, Negative 16 plus positive 8 is going to give us a negative 8. So we have positive 8x equals negative 8. And if we try it again, we're trying to solve for x, we're going to divide by 8. And these cancel out. And x, negative 8 divided by 8, x is then going to be equal to negative 1, which is b. Okay? So this is some of the most advanced stuff you'll see on the GED, um, even with that other one where you had to, to FOIL. Um, if this is fairly beyond what, what, you're, what is familiar to you, maybe you never had this in school, um, don't be discouraged. You can pass the GED without mastering this. Um, it's good to know there's lots of skills in here that you do need to know, like once you get it down to probably this level, um, you need to know that. But the systems of equations, if, if, um, if that, this is really confusing, again, I would focus on the basics before you start trying to tackle this. Um, and chances are you'll pass the GED before you even need to master this. Um, and that actually goes same for question 11 that we'll get to with a quadratic formula. But this one here, this one is, is um, something that you do need to be able to do. So it said, Isabel saved 15000 and bought a car that cost 12700 The insurance for the car will cost 600 per year. How many full years will Isabella be able to pay for car insurance with her remaining savings? Okay. So... Um, here's the situation. She has savings, right? And she's going to subtract the cost of the car, okay? Cost of the car, not the cost of the cost. So we're going to subtract the cost of the car from the savings, and that's going to give us the money left over for insurance. All right, so let's go ahead. Again, she has 15000 in savings, and we need to subtract 12700 because that's how much the car cost. And this is going to give us how much money she has left over for insurance at 600 per year. Okay, so let's take 15,000, 15,000, enter it into the calculator. There we go, 15,000 minus 12,700, which is the price of the car. And that gives her 2,300 for insurance. And it's going to cost her 600 per year. So you could do something like, the, oh, sorry, um, 2,300. And how many times can 600 fit into that? How many 600s can we pull out of that? Because that's going to be per year, right? Well, we can get rid of our zeros here if we want. And that makes the number a little bit easier to deal with. 
And so we've got 23 um, over 6, okay? So what we're trying to do here is see well, how many times does 6 fit into 23? Well, one year would be 600, two years would be 1,200, three years would be 1,800 or 18, and then four years would be 2,400. Okay, again, I just got rid of the zeros to make it easier. So if you were to, to divide these, we have a calculator, so we might as well do it. 2300 divided by 600 gives us, uh, oh, I did 6,000, sorry. Let's do 23, let's do that again. It's kind of tricky with this pen and... Uh, divided by 600 here. There we go. And we get 3.8. So we don't have a fourth year. We have more money than we need for three years, so she'll have a little money left over, but she only has enough money for three years. She's going to have to somewhat find money for that fourth year. So the answer that we can use here is A. All right, so here's another concept that, again, I think is fairly advanced. Um, in the GED, and it, it's not that hard, but if this would not be the first place that I would tackle, if I'm just starting to learn learn the GED, save this stuff for, for later. Um, but we're here now, so we might as well do it. So we have to solve 4x squared minus x minus 5 equals uh, 0. And notice we have two different answers here. x can be equal to something and x is equal to something else. So what we're going to end up doing here is the quadratic formula. And so this is a screenshot taken from the GED uh, formula sheet where we have the standard form of the quadratic equation, which equals y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and then once we know a and we know b and we know c, we can put it into this form of the equation and we can solve for x. Because of this plus or minus here, in the quadratic formula, we are going to do it uh, as a plus, and we will do it as a subtraction, and that's going to give us our two answers. Okay, so let's take the the formula here, or sorry, the the um, uh, equation that they give us: four x squared minus x minus five equals zero. All right, and now what I would do is you can say, you know, here's your y. Um, and so this becomes your ax squared plus bx plus c. And so an a here then, a is equal to 4, b is equal to, there's actually a 1 that's implied here, we don't normally write it, but b is equal to a negative 1, c is going to be equal to a negative 5. So this is very important. You got to get to this part first. You got to know what A, B, and C are, and you find it from here. So now we're going to take this form of the of the um, quadratic formula: x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c. And all of this divided by 2 times a. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do x equals um, a negative. And so in parentheses, we need to put b, which is negative 1. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and write the whole thing before I start solving some of these. Plus minus uh, the square root of b squared, so that's going to be a negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4, times um, c, which is negative 5. Okay, so, and we can kind of think of these as being, this here as being in parentheses, all right? And then all of this divided by 2, sorry, 2 times a, which is 4. All right, so let's go through. This test makers love to do this type of thing here. They love to have b be a negative number because they want to make sure you know you got to use this negative and this negative. So a negative times a negative is going to make this a positive 1. Okay, 
almost want to anticipate that when you do these standardized tests. Same thing here. We got B again. We have to multiply it uh, or square it or multiply it times itself. So negative 1 times a negative 1, again, is a positive 1. So we've got the square root here. Don't forget that. Um, minus 4 times 4 is 16 times a negative 5. So again, give your brain a break here. Um, and you could do 4 times 4 times a negative 5. Use the calculator and we end up with a negative 80. So we got a negative, or we're subtracting a negative 80 here. Okay? And then all of this is divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. So we got 1 plus or minus the square root of what we have going on in here. So we've got 1 minus uh, a negative 80. So you would normally n not write that if you distribute this. This negative across, this is, you're going to think of this as becoming 1 plus a positive 80. So we're actually going to get the square root of 81. Hopefully you recognize that as a perfect square. Um, and so divided by 8. So this is a perfect square. The square root of 81 is 9. 9 times 9 is uh, 81. You could put that in the calculator. So here we've got um, 1 plus or minus the square root of 81 is now 9 divided by 8. All right, so here is where, let's put it up here. 1 plus or minus 9 divided by 8. All right, so let's do the plus first. Let's do 1 plus 9 divided by 8. Well, 1 plus 9 is 10 divided by 8. Can we simplify this? Yes. <clears throat> both even numbers, so we can divide, cut them in half or divide by 2. 2 goes into 10 5 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times. So 5, 4, so we close. Yes, we have 5 over 4 here, okay, and we also have it up here. All right, now let's do 1 um, minus 9 divided by 8. Well, if we do 1 minus 9, uh, that's a negative 8. Okay, so anytime, let me just do this over here because a lot of students get this wrong. One minus nine. So anytime you're subtracting, you want to think of it as take this subtraction and add the opposite. So do one plus a negative nine. Then maybe you see it, or you can even do these kind of little things. So you could do like three, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, and one positive. Okay? And so those cancel each other out, and you end up with eight negatives left over. And that's why your answer is negative eight. It, you know, working with students on the GED, this is often um, a source of, of difficulty for students. So I really encourage you to think of subtraction as adding the opposite. So now we have a negative eight divided by a positive eight, which is going to be a negative one. So let's find our answer here. Negative 1, all right, here's a negative 1, and here's x is 5 over 4. So sure enough, here is a. a is our answer. Negative 1 and 5 over 4 using the quadratic formula. All right, so again, remember these two formulas. You don't have to pull this out of your head. You don't have to memorize this. You just have to know how to use it. This is on the formula sheet.